we start off this session, T.I. has just stepped through a portal, shocking a lot of people as he steps into this town square. There is stalls and tons of people wandering around, buying things. It's like this bazaar. There are numerous races that you haven't encountered yet. They're all in your database, but you just haven't personally seen them. And you know this city to be the city of Sanctuary. And you see a lot of people looking going, Oh my god, what is that? Step away from it. You don't know what it is. It looks like a robot. I look at all these people that are staring at me, and I say... I am no robot. I am an inevitable. I come from the planet Mechanus. Where is Borodon? I just kind of yell that to everyone. <laughs> a lot of people are really cautious and uh, sort of backing away from you. And this one dwarf, he pushes through the crowd. You can see he has what must be a guard's uniform on. And he's quickly putting his hat on. Uh, you, um, Halt? I do not take your commands. Who are you? I am TI424. What the hell? All right. Are you Borodon? Borodon? Wait, you're looking for Borodon? I'm looking for Borodon. Well, we should find Borodon together. That actually wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm kind of feeling outnumbered. I'm Marty. Uh, I'm a guard around here. Marty? Wait, let's get you out of the crowd. Marty is a good name for you. It fits your short stature. Short name, short stature. Marty. I'm just going to let that one slide. Let's get out of this crowd. Come on. Following you. He leads you through this crowd. A lot of people are parting, and he eventually takes you to this alley that's out of the way. You see there's a lot of refuse that's been piled up back here. It looks like it's where a lot of the stores just dump any kind of waste and let the town services go take care of it all right now that we're away from all those eyes how did you get here i was sent here on a mission to find borodon from the planet mechanist through a portal yeah i've been told to find borodon too N no portals though but my boss well not really my boss but one of my superiors uh, detective bill he's getting me to look into this death shift crew that's borodon's a part of death shift and we're just trying to figure out where the hell they are. They've been in all sorts of things around town, breaking laws and stuff. How does one shift death? I don't know. Uh, they're a part of this group called The Chosen, and uh, I think they have some sort of ability to cheat death. Analyzing. Analyzing. Initiating. Yes. Yes, The Chosen. I, I have that in my databases. Oh, that's handy. Hmm... Yeah, th their headquarters are here in this town. Headquarters of all the Chosen? Yeah. Borodon must be, must be there. We must go. Yeah, but we can't get in. Their guards won't let us in. We must go. We must get inside to find Borodon. Maybe if I bring a giant robot, they'll let me in. We don't take their commands now, Marty. We are in charge here. We must find Borodon. Only one mission. You know, you're right. I am a guard of Sanctuary. They're just people coming in, and I appreciate their help, but they're not the ones in command. You're right, T.I. Let's go sort this out. Mechanist will prevail. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and so Marty is following along, and uh, he's talking to you as you guys are walking along. So you're an inevitable? What even is that? Well, Marty, just like you are a guard to police these lands, I police all of the universe. What's the universe? Is that another country? So there are multiple planets, large circular things floating through space, and I come from a different planet. You see, you're not on a flat surface like you may think but a round surface. If I'm on a round surface, I could just fall off. How does that make... What if I was on the bottom of it? i just fall off into space. Oh, Marty. I don't know how to explain this to you. Maybe we should turn you into an inevitable so you can have my database programming. That sounds painful. 
No. No, I'm good. So you guys walk through this city, and he leads you away from this market district, and winding along a few roads, you make it in what you can analyze as a temple district. There are a lot of different holy symbols on these different buildings, and eventually you come across this one large circular building. It has these columns that are in the front holding up this massive stonework that overhangs a part of the sidewalk. And it has these stairs leading up into this grand sort of marble building. And these two large doors are sealed. And there's two guards that stand in front of it made completely out of what appears to be positive energy. Yeah, those are the guards. They won't let me in. Said I need a permit, and I can't get one. We are on a mission for Mechanist, Marty. We do not need permits. We can go where we please to complete our mission. And I walk up to the door. So you walk up to the door, Marty's quick behind you, and these two guards face towards you. Halt, being. Hello, I am TI-424. I come in urgent need to find Borodon. TI-424? What are you, and why are you looking for Borodon? I am an inevitable, and I seek Borodon for punishment. They look at each other a little worried. Or as worried as you might guess they're looking, they don't really have a face. What crime has Borodon committed? He has defied the laws of time. He has reversed time multiple times. Just one moment. You see one of them pulls out what looks like a stone. And he begins to speak into it. We have a construct here that is in search of Borodon saying that he has broken the laws of time. I, I'm i not the only one searching for him. Marty here is also looking for him. He, apparently... That's true, he broke a law. <laughs> I don't know how you break time, but he did that too, so like, double bad. Yeah, he can't... He can't just, you know, be breaking laws in Sanctuary and the universe at the same time. Yeah, he's gonna fall off the damn planet. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna let it transition from there because that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the two luminous just stare at Marty and quickly go back, and you hear over the the stone. We're currently busy in New Dawn. We do not have time for this. Tell this construct to come back in two days' time. Well, you heard him. That was Lord Elwyn. He will have the information you need, but he's currently not here. Is Borodon inside? I don't believe so. Where is Borodon? I'm not sure he might be around the city. It shouldn't be hard to find a dwarf with golden arms. Analyzing. Analyzing. Golden arms. I killed someone with golden arms. Borodin. Ah, yes. His son, Borodon. Yes. You, you killed his father? Uh, TI-424 begins to turn around and go to search him throughout the sanctuary. <laughs> Marty looks at the Luminous and looks at you, TI, and quickly hurries after you. <laughs> uh, well, if Borodon's such a bad dude, I guess his dad must be, like, really bad, because he taught him to be bad, right? Nah, that was an error in my programming. I thought it was Borodon. So I killed him. Whoa, wait, are you trying to kill Bordon? Yes. Oh, I'm just supposed to arrest him. What did he do in Sanctuary that requires arrest but not death? Well, we believe he's linked to a few murders here. And, uh, you know, trespassing, breaking and entering. But we're not 100% sure. If he murdered someone, eye for eye, right? Yeah, but, like, we gotta, we gotta prove it. And then once we prove it, Oh, I can prove it. He reversed time. Mechanus says so. What is Mechanus? Mechanus is a planet. Like a round thing in the sky. How big is it? It's very, very large. Larger than your city. Whoa. That's pretty crazy that your, uh, your planet knows things. I don't know if my planet knows things. All planets know things. They just might not speak. You think that's what druids are all about? Like, druids can talk to planets? That's why they're so wise. Because the druid can talk to the planet, and the planet knows things. 
Analyzing. Analyzing. Druids. What are these? They're like nature priests. I have a cousin. He went into being a druid. And I told him, hey, Rothgar, you know, why are you being a druid? You shouldn't be a druid because we're all guards in the family and soldiers. It's kind of weird. And he said, nah, man, like the planet's calling to me. Bam, that makes sense. He's a druid because he could talk to the planet. So all these druids, they're all like nature priests. And that means they must like worship the planet because they could talk to it. And it's super smart. Yes, that calculates. That is probable. Wow. You know, you, you always learn things every day. You never really uh, realize it until you just stop and think. What's think? You know, just like sit and like stew on it, you know, like get your brain going. Sleep mode. I am making Marty more and more a beach bum. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean like sleep mode? Yeah. But, like, you're still awake, you're just thinking, you know, you're just, like, you're, like, putting, putting the ideas together and coming up with answers. Yes. Like, whenever your memory is stationary and still running, but you wait for someone to push a button to turn you back on. Yeah, like, that happens sometimes to me, like, I'll just be kind of zoning out at my guard post and someone will come by and say, hey... I was just robbed. Where were you? And they like they poke me, and I was like, "Oh, sorry about that. I was just thinking. I didn't know." Yeah, sleep mode. I have that. Want me to show you? Yeah. Wait. How do I wake you up? Um. Uh, I don't know actually. Usually, someone else is there to handle that. Yeah, it should be fine. Go to sleep mode. All right. <laughs> I put myself in sleep mode. And I don't know how to turn myself back on. <laughs> <laughs> you put yourself in sleep mode. And when you finally awaken, it is the middle of the night. And Marty is just looking frustrated. He has a drink in one of his hands. Oh, fucking thank God. Oh, my. T.I., that took so long. How long has it been? <laughs> like five hours. Why didn't you push the button sooner? I couldn't find it. I didn't know it was behind your left knee. Yes, that makes sense. Oh, well, hey, I figured it out, and I got to have a drink, a uh, couple. But hey, that's okay. I heard some people talk about dwarves. I mean, I'm a dwarf, but, like, you know, they'll always think that I just know other dwarves, but I don't. That's actually really racist. Um, but they talked to me about it anyways, so I heard about some dwarves down near the docks. Do you think it could be Borodon? Maybe. Because, like, what if he's trying to seek out some help and he thinks who's going to help him out? Other dwarves. Because he's a bad dude, so he's trying to, like, poison the minds of the next generation. You know? How long ago did they tell you this? Uh, probably, like, an hour or two ago. I was still trying to figure out how to turn you on. I really thought the button would be on the chest or the head. We must hurry. Get on my back. Uh, okay. <laughs> he clambers on. As he gets on my back, I cast jump, and I jump onto a building and go from building to building towards the docks, I believe he said. Yep. <laughs> so you do this, your thrusters shoot out of your legs and fire you up. Yeah, it should just be, whoa! <laughs> you just go sailing, and the whole time he's just, as you are just bounding from building to building. Other people are watching. And it, like when some people look up from their windows, he goes, Sanctuary City Guard! Don't worry, everything's under control! <laughs> <laughs> as you're just bounding along. And he's just flashing his badge to people as you're running by. And you make it down to this area. There are still a number of street lamps lit up, so it's not too hard to see. And you see there are some large warehouses and a few taverns, a lot of different ships that are docked here. And this, you, you can't necessarily smell, but you can probably analyze smells. So your senses are picking up that there are heavy amounts of fish odor and decay. Fish. I have this in my programming. What does that smell? 
It doesn't smell like actual fish. It smells like bad. Bad fish. Yeah, that's like they gut the fish, then they just leave the bits out, and then they sometimes they just toss them back into the sea. Other times they do something else with them, like make chum. Why do you do this to your planet? Oh, like, that's the thing. If you put it in the ocean, um, the ocean takes care of it. Why do you do this to your planet? That is... I don't understand. What? That is gross. Well, we eat the fish. And, like, when you put all the other fish bits back in the water, other fish eat the fish bits. So you're feeding those fish, too. So, like, circle of life, as my, my cousin Rothgar says. That is disgusting. Fish eating dead, decayed fish. Why would you do that to yourselves? Hey, man. Well, sometimes it's pretty good. Like, other times it's real gross. It just depends how it's made, how they cook it. Faerun is a very strange place. What do you eat in Mechanus? I do not eat. What? So you don't even know, like, what a good sandwich tastes like? I do not eat, sleep, or drink. Oh man, I'm so sorry. That's that's real sad. Well, I guess I do sleep because I have a sleep mode, but it's not required for me to function. So like, let's say you find Bordon and like you you do your mission. What happens to you? I will be sent on a new mission. Well, that's pretty cool. Is there a bunch of you? Like do you have a bunch of siblings and stuff? Siblings. Analyzing. Yeah, like bro Brothers and sisters, you know? I used to have friends, but I don't have friends anymore. Oh man, do they get mad at you? No, I saved them. I think. I don't know. They could be dead. And then you see T.I.'s head kind of twitch because uh, he's going against his programming and permissions to have feelings. Marty pats you on the side, he's like, hey man, I bet your friends are still alive. So you still got friends. Guess what? I'm your friend now. So you got even more friends. You're my friend, Marty? Yeah, we're buds, man. I thought we were just on a mission together. But, yes, friends. And T.I. puts the back of his hand on his shoulder because he still doesn't realize <laughs> how to do the whole hand on a shoulder thing. <laughs> He looks at it, and uh, you could tell he probably just thinks like it's a cultural thing. And so he does the same to you. Or at least as high as he can. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, we're friends. That's what happens on these journeys. Crazy stuff happens, and you just you form a bond. And maybe this bond was formed in a really rapid succession, but that doesn't make it any less relevant. Yes, but I need we need to get back to the mission. I must find Borodon. That's true. Well, let's see. There's a lot of warehouses here. I heard that these dwarves, uh, they were going into like a weird old building. Doesn't look like it's being used anymore. A lot of these warehouses look like they're still in use. So we got to try to find something that looks old and decayed. Probably some broken windows or something. Hmm. My thought process is everything here is old and decayed. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> this place is pretty, pretty shit. But uh, this is usually where I have to do my guard rounds, and it's the worst. These people here are not fun. But, uh, yeah, it, it could use a little bit of TLC. All right, let's find this broken, more broken, most broken building. Let's do it up. Roll me an investigation. Oh, fuck. Eight. He got a one. <laughs> so you two are wandering around, and uh, you're trying to find this old building, and it's not easy because a lot of these buildings look old, and every time you're like, oh, I found one, people will just start walking out of it. And then Marty finds this really weird multicolored starfish. Whoa, T.I., come look at this thing. I run over. It is. You've never seen something like this before. It's not in your database. Hmm. This is so weird. I pick it up. It's squishy. Uh, it kind of reacts like it's slowly moving back and forth, like as if it's trying to get away. And it is numerous different hues. And as you look at it in the light, the hues seem to uh, shift slightly. 
roll me I guess investigation would be the best thing to like search through your database or something sure it's gonna be a 12 so you're analyzing this it's definitely not from Faerun this is not native to this world Marty this is not from your world this must have come from some sort of portal like me oh oh man and Bordon's super weird and doesn't seem like he's from this world I bet this is a clue it could be. Maybe, did you find this near the water? Yeah, actually, there's like a little uh, a little boathouse over there. I found it kind of near there and brought it over. Let's go look. Sure. And in my head, out of game, I know he got a one on his investigation, so I know this is leading us nowhere. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This this uh, guard has showed up a few times. Like he's helped out Detective Bill, and th- th- he's the one who they tricked uh, <laughs> when Kelsar's like, "No, that's not Ronnie." Yeah, yeah like, I remember that's someone this else. One. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, it's just such an unfortunate life for this man. <laughs> so he starts leading you towards this boathouse, and you're scanning along, looking. There's no apparent signs of life just yet. All right. I'm going to try to creep in there and see what I can see, because I don't need any light. Us dwarves, we're good like that. I also do not need light, but before we do that, in case this came from a portal, let me try to find that portal. Sure. And I use my Horizon Walker Detect Portal ability to see if there's a portal in the area. So you look around, and you're picking up some strange activities, mainly from this one boat that is drifting up and down slowly. It's been moored, and on the side of it, it says the Salty Spittoon. And you, you're pointing that out to me because I think it has some sort of portal-esque... There is definitely, it seems like a lot of portal activity has happened. There's nothing open there, but a lot of stuff's been going on there recently. Yeah, me we adjusted it a bit in our campaign okay. because Robert has the same thing. Oh yeah, that's right. So originally uh, it's just that you detect an open portal, but we thought it would be cooler is if it did that as well as could show you trace elements of older portals. Cool. Alright. Yes, Marty. There is some sort of portal activity inside the Salty Spittoon. Oh man. That's the ship that they killed a ton of people in. It's a real bad ship. Who is they? Borodon? Nah, like these crazy nobles and stuff. They're going around thinking that they were like super good dudes, but they were murdering a bunch of people. It was really gross. Hmm. Hey, we can go check it out, though. I'm a guard. I'm allowed to go up there. So this is perfect. All right. I will follow you. So he leads you to this area where there's this gangplank that's leading up onto the boat. You both walk up onto it, and you see the whole uh, the deck of the ship has been painted this crimson red. You see a large scorch mark is by one of the railings, and there is a door leading further down into the ship. And Marty looks the the red on the ground. Yeah, this red, it's all the blood of the people they killed, and it stained the deck. You can totally see that it's paint. <laughs> so gross marty you are mistaken that is that is just paint oh for real yes marty oh that's so disappointing i mean i mean they did totally kill a lot of people on here but i mean oh well is it is it disappointing that that many people were not murdered to you no no i just i like a good um, spooky story and uh, it just kind of like the story is just it was wrong that's all but I mean it was wrong in a good way but you know what I mean analyzing no I do not yeah man <laughs> what does that door lead to uh, I'm pretty sure that was the hall so uh, like sleeping quarters some merchandise could be someone hiding down there let's investigate Borodon must Borodon could be here Oh, yeah, good idea. Uh, Roll me a perception as you're going down these stairs. 21. Oh. So you start walking down these stairs, and uh, what are these new night vision goggles like for TI? Is it like a 
a thing he hits and it puts like a little lens over his eyes. I, I kind of pictured them as if he's wearing them all the time now to hide his robot eyes as if they were just goggles. Um, because it does grant dark vision, but I imagine that it's also not affected during daylight. Um, so it's kind of like sunglasses, I guess. It's kind of like those sunglasses that fade to, you know, be sunglasses when it's bright outside, but it's the opposite oh, effect. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the prescription yeah, glasses. Yeah. yeah. That way he can hide his red LED lights and try to, and he's just hiding one more feature about him that he's a construct, So because he's always on that hunt to be more familiar to the people that he's around. Yeah, I love it. That's great. Your goggles, they... They're uh, keeping your red LED eyes hidden <laughs> as you're looking, do, uh, looking through and you're highlighting different areas. And while you're scanning, you pick up traces of uh, some different scents that don't make sense why they're here. Like more of like a perfumey smell that's near a few of these hammocks that are set up. And you see a few plastic bottles that do not belong in this world at all. I, T.I. walks over and picks one up and then looks at Marty. This is not of your world. I have been to this planet before that makes plastics. Whoa, what is plastic? It is a solid structure that's bendable. Oh, that sounds really useful. It will destroy your oceans. Oh, that just made me really sad. That was, wow, that was a roller coaster. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this plastic come from, though? Multiple worlds have made it. But what one? Who would be so evil to bring this ocean-destroying substance here? My head just kind of, like, turns and looks to Marty without, like, while I'm bent over looking at this plastic. <laughs> but it's that creepy, like, 360-degree turn thing. And I look at it, but I say, Cubans. Oh, no. Hey, let's think. Okay, Bordon travels with Kelsar. Uh, he's a tiefling paladin. Um, he has human in him, so there's a possibility. But he's also a paladin, so kind of conflicting, but you never know. Also conflicting because tieflings are part demon. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, I never thought about that. He must be a real outlier. <laughs> uh, so then we have a Githyanki ranger that's going with them, MZ. Creepy dude looks like a giant goblin. Get Yankee. I know that race. Yeah, he seems pretty, uh, pretty rough. I actually have run into them before, but they tricked me. How did they trick you? Oh, they told me they were other people, and I believed them for some reason. I just took everything at face value, and then later I found out, uh, one of them had cast a spell on me. Ah, magic. Yeah. I felt like such a dunce. And you know who did that? The half-elf bard, Ronnie. And he also has human in him. Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie O'Connell. Apparently he's supposed to be famous. I don't know. This name does not register in my programming or databases. Oh, man. That would be really hard for him to hear. If you really want to catch him off guard, you should say that to him. I wish not to hurt people's feelings. I only wish to hurt them physically. Mostly Borodon. Oh... Well, that's good. That's a good sign. That's empathy right there, man. Well, thank you for this information. I should grant you a prize for this information. Ooh, I love prizes. What is it? One minor crime of yours in the past can be removed from the records. Which crime would you like that to be? Definitely drunk and disorderly. Yeah. Uh, let's see which one. Let's go... Oh, um... I got it. I was trying to help this person set up this banner at their new stall, but I've been drinking a little bit. Barely any. And uh, it just made me slip on the ladder and I crashed and I destroyed their whole stall. Yeah, I felt bad, but, you know, things happen. All right. That crime has been removed from Mechanus' databases. You will no longer be punished for it. Yes! Oh, man. One up for Marty. All right. Let me go down my checklist now of how I can find Borodon. He is a part of a group called Death Shift. Right. Which 
doesn't make sense. But Death Shift is composed of Ronnie, the Bard, Kalsar, the Paladin, mm -hmm. MZ, the Gith Yankee Ranger. Right. Perfect. And Death Shift must be somewhere together. Yes? A lot of the time I hear they're together, but sometimes they like, like when they're in town, they split up. So it could be that like Bordon's wandering around on his own and someone's bringing in this ocean killing plastic. Oh. Do they fight for each other? Yeah, yeah, I think they're like a team. Are the other three Borodon's bodyguards? Will I need to kill those three as well? From what I gather, they all get along really well and just work in a synchronized group. <laughs> T.I. turns his head 90 degrees away and then kind of bends over sadly. Best friends. Friends. Hey, man, you'll find your friends. Don't worry, I'm sure they're out there. They Were they tough people? I don't even remember their names now. They have been erased from my memory. That's not fair. But I remember my actions and why I did them. Hmm. Hey, wait, if you could search up, like, things in your head with your super thinking, that means your planet wouldn't have went and forgot your thoughts, right? It probably just put them in another compartment. So your friends' names are probably just in another compartment, in another bin. Well, I can't access that area of the planet. It would be against the law. Yeah, but like it feels like it's against the law to steal, right? And they stole those names from you, so that's probably... You know, I bet this is what it was, as Marty like finishes the last of his drink and sets it down. I bet this was all one big misunderstanding and they actually never meant to take those names because that doesn't make any sense and stealing's wrong and you seem like a pretty straight up dude so it's probably a mistake that they erased the names do you think it was a mistake or forcefully done on purpose definitely a mistake <laughs> i 100 percent believe that they wouldn't do something like that because that's mean and stealing's wrong so it was totally a mistake. Well, even mistakes are punished. Maybe Mechanus has committed a crime against me. Yeah, it... maybe I should maybe I should fight against the planet Mechanus and kill the planet Mechanus. Well, I mean, that's a little hardcore. Maybe you should like tone it down and like talk to them, be like, "Hey, I didn't think that was really cool what you did, and I'd like to have those names back, please." And if they still say no, then you're like, "Well, I'm going to get these names back," and you just take them back. Hmm. It's probably in like a bin that says like "Ti" on it, like in a a bin, a house. Yeah. What's a bin? You mean like a bucket? Yeah. Right. Like that. That's where you like store your information, right? I don't know. That is not how data is stored. Oh. Well, news to Marty. You have filing cabinets. We have data. Well, in your data cabinet, then, you just got to find <laughs> uh, the TI folder. <laughs> the TI folder. Yes, folders. Folders make sense. Perfect. Ah, oh, yeah. Right on. Yeah. There could be a folder with my name on it with deleted information. There you go. It's probably a big misunderstanding. But I think I only have 30 days before it's permanently deleted. So I must go now. Uh, no, well, but I gotta finish my board on mission. Oh. Wait, can you like access it now then? Hmm. I might not have permissions. I might. I might have to change some server permissions. <laughs> well, just change them back when you're I done. I can't take myself seriously. <laughs> These two are so dumb, and they should not be in charge of these things. <laughs> yeah, just change them back when you're done. I will try to change the permissions. Perfect. Initializing. Roll me uh, an investigation along with a wisdom saving throw. All right, investigation. It's a seven. <laughs> All right. My wisdom saving throw is... A 19. <laughs> so you have successfully changed your permissions 
and you just can't seem to find it at the moment, but probably if you took some more time, you could locate this stuff. All right. It seems I can access the folders, but I cannot find the information at this time. Okay, well, I mean, I could take a nap in this hammock <laughs> if you want to look, or we could keep going. I need to I need to commit to one mission at a time. Let us continue finding clues to Borodon. That's fair. Okay, so we got plastic, weird starfish that you're still holding. Um, well, let's see. There's dwarves down at the dock, old creepy building, board on super bad dude. Let's go back. Maybe we missed a building. I'm, yeah. Let's go check this out. All right. I am currently trying to add up all the variables, but I'm coming up with nothing. So, yes, let's see if there's any other clues around. Don't worry, I'm pretty good at this stuff. He's rolled <laughs> two ones so far for his investigation. All right, so you start wandering, and Marty's helping look around. He's, like, kind of dragging his feet a little bit because he looks a little tired. You find this one building, and it matches up the description. Well, Marty does, actually, surprisingly. He's like, oh, it's right over here. It was near the beginning of where you started searching, and you just wandered right by it. How did we miss this? Probably, um... That starfish distracted us. Gonna go on a limb. <laughs> but the starfish was a clue, so that's okay. And it led us to helping you get back memories. I like this starfish, though. You can keep it. It does remind me of other worlds and friends. It seems to love me. It's moving on my on my metal. Yeah, that that's probably what it means. You just make sure you give it water every now and then. Should be good. Water? Why does it need water? It's a sea creature, so they need water all the time. Can it survive outside of the water? For a bit, probably. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't keep it. I don't think I have that responsibility in me programmed. So I take the starfish and I just chunk it over the buildings back into the <laughs> ocean. <laughs> and you just hear this distant plop as it hits the water. <laughs> wow, man, that was really uh, mature of you. That was good. If you can't take care of a pet, you shouldn't have it. Yeah, no, good on you. That starfish committed no crime to die. Yeah, I'm sure he'll do real good in the ocean. <laughs> so now that that foreign invasive species is now in the <laughs> ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Should be good. It's just going to multiply on a ridiculous scale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Marty turns back to this building. All right, we're going to have to sneak in here. You pretty good at sneaking? Yes. So am I. Let's do this. <laughs> Roll me a stealth. Oh my fucking god. 25. So you silently open up this door, and there's no noise at all. It looks like it should have creaked, but nothing happened. And then just as you walk in, you hear... <laughs> and Marty steps on a bottle, slips backwards, and just smashes through a chair. Oh, my God. Hate it when people don't clean up after themselves. Littering is so wrong. I, I thought you said you were good at this. I am good when people don't leave booby traps like that. Now let's, I'm sure no one heard it. Let's go. All right, yes, let's move forward. So you start wandering into this house a little bit more, and you see that there is this old decaying furniture. It looked like this might have been an office, maybe? And far off to the side, you can see there is what looks to be a trap door. It was recently covered in stuff, but it looks like someone uncovered it. That must be where Bordon is. Really? You think so? Yeah. Well, it's a spooky building with a weird trap door and Bordon's a bad dude. Let's rush in. T.I. rushes towards the trap door <laughs> to, gain, to get the surprise. <laughs> so you rush towards the trap door, rip it open, and there is a ladder going down. It's just a ladder. Yeah, but it goes down, right? Oh, I thought maybe it was a small cubby where Borodon was hiding. Oh, that would have really surprised me. Yeah. That was a good thinking, but no, it looks like we got to go further in. Let's continue our pursuit. And I start walking down the ladder. So you get down this ladder and you make it into 
these caves. And uh, the ladder goes down maybe 25 feet. And down here, your goggles activate and you're looking around. And you actually see all the walls are made up of this smooth black surface. It's an alien material to be sure. And you're not sure why it's here because it doesn't belong in Faerun. It's like this perfect black surface and you look there is a tunnel it just branches out into two sides one's going to your left and one's going to your right Mm. and you hear Marty come down the ladder what the hell is this stuff it is something not of this world again but I don't know what world it is of let me try to search my databases with your new permissions roll with advantage (laughs) stuff that Tia shouldn't know. <laughs> 21. So you look over your database, you're combing through the files, and you come up on a query that leads you to information on the Illithid. And this is the type of building material. It's partially sentient, and they can help shift it into whatever it is they need. They usually use it inside their ships when they're sailing through space to create different rooms or cells. And so if this stuff is here, it's either someone who knows how to work with this illithid substance or the illithid themselves. Marty, this is... Yeah? This is of an evil creature. Many illithid are on our databases as, as criminals. And this is an illithid structure. Wait, you mean like a mind flare? Yes, that is a common nickname for their race. Oh man, Death Shift killed a Mind Flare just recently in this old building. Far away from here though, like in the city though. So if the Mind Flare are here, Death Shift's probably looking into this. This is maybe how that Mind Flayer got here. This could be a ship. That's freaky. But I mean, if we just leave the Mind Flare, they're going to kill people. Not my problem. Damn, it is mine though. <laughs> Why is it your problem, Marty? Well, like, it's my job to, like, protect the city and stop bad things. So, I got, like, the elite that are bad news. Mm. Oh, shoot. You want to help me out? Like, Death Shift might be here. I don't know. Well, Marty, since we are friends, and friends help each other, I will help you on this quest to kill the Illithid. Perfect. Thank you. It shouldn't be that hard. It looked like Death Shift took one out. No. That is your mistake, Marty. Illithid are very dangerous creatures. Okay, then maybe let's just do like a scouting mission. And if we can avoid fighting, we'll bring back up in a bit. You need to protect your mind. Do you know how to protect your mind, Marty? Um, no, my mom always said my mind was vacant. That is a very sad thing to hear, Marty. Yeah, I said that was really rude. I'm disappointed in your ability to understand what I am talking about, Marty. I don't know how to protect my mind. What do you do? I have antivirus. Is that like a food? No. Oh, wait, you don't eat. Well, I have a metal guard hat. Like, will that help? It could. It is made of metal, so it could deflect things. Sweet. All right, I think that's about as good as it's going to get at the moment. Let's hope and pray. Because I cannot help you if you go down. Oh, good point. Let me do a quick prayer here. Dear Maradin... Uh, let us get through this, okay? Uh, and let T.I. find out where his buds are. All right, done. Do I know who Maradin is? Uh, in your database, yeah. You, it's a, it would be an easy query to know that it was uh, one of the main dwarven gods. Maradin. I know that god. Yeah, he looks after us dwarves. Well, the good dwarves, that is. Punishes the bad ones. He is a good man. Oh, you see him? No, but... His actions are in my databases, and they are all of great, great conquest and great doings. Oh, nice. Yeah, that totally lines up with what I was taught. He's all about really protecting the little guy and stuff. All right, let's look through these tunnels and see what we can find and get the hell out of here. Yes, let's do it. Uh, So which tunnel would you like to go down? The one to the right or to the left? Left is right. All right, so you're going left? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. So you start walking down this tunnel to the left, and it immediately spikes off into three different tunnels. Again, left is right. 
<laughs> so you go down this left one, and it's that same blackish material. And as you go further and further, you make it to this area where there are these pits, these like shallow, wide pits, and they are full of bloated, half-rotted corpses that look like they're all mid-transformation of a lithid, but they've failed. And some of them still have this look of shock and horror on their faces, and others it's completely rotted off, and there's flies everywhere and maggots crawling on them. Oh my god. (laughs) This is why you must protect your mind, Marty. Oh man, they could do that to you. This is so gross. Well, they cannot do it to me, but they can do it to you, yes. Is Bordon in that pile? Searching. Searching. Roll me a perception. Twelve. I, you do not see any dwarves with golden arms in there. I see no gold, so he must not be there. You look over and Marty has this like rag over his face. All right, let's just uh, let's get the hell out of this spot. It stinks. All right, we will move to the next tunnel. So you go back to the three and you take the leftmost one. Yes, because left is right. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to treat this like a maze. <laughs> so you wander it for quite some time. It eventually splits off into two. And I imagine you keep taking the leftmost. Yes, because left is right. <laughs> All right. So you keep on going. And eventually you can see a soft purple glow coming from this room. Mm. Whoa, what do you think that is? I do not know. Let us search. All right. Um, Marty's going to try to stealth. If I think he's, like, being nervous stealthing, I will also uh, commit to stealthing with him. Yeah, he looks nervous. Ever since he saw those bodies, he's been pretty nervous. 20 for me, not a crit. You stealth up, and you're both pretty quiet. And you look a little more into this room, and it's this very minimalistic room. There are a couple tables. There's no chairs. There's a few bookcases. And there is this pedestal in the center of the room with a glowing purple orb. And there are a number of cushions that are sat around this orb. And with its back towards you, you see one elithid, their legs crossed, their hands resting on their knees, and they seem to be in some sort of reverie or meditation near this orb. I look at Marty, and I give him like a signal to stop and not move. He's frozen, and he looks at you and gives you a quick nod. And then I quietly pull my heavy crossbow. Okay. And I aim at the elithid. <laughs> Roll to hit. You have advantage. <laughs> And, uh, but at first, first thing I do is I cast Zephyr Strike on myself, which will give me a D8 worth of damage on my next attack within a minute. Oh, boy. <laughs> and then, <laughs> okay. and then I use Planar Warrior for my bonus action on the turn for an additional D8 of damage. And, uh, I'm gonna use Sharpshooter. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> to give me a negative five to my attack, but plus ten to damage. And then I look at Marty and I like quietly say, Are you sure? What? <laughs> you said we must kill all a uh, Let's see what he <laughs> says. Marty, how brave are you right now? He looks at you with a determined look <laughs> and nods. <laughs> Pulling out his own hand crossbow. Like, we got this. I get I, I did a higher low and he got a 93. <laughs> and I'm like, he's in it. <laughs> this is what friends are for, yes. <laughs> he's like, yeah. <laughs> so I fire. Rolled a hit. Actually not bad. 17. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, I didn't want to do this. But he's my friend. This is great. I love it. (laughs) It's way different than I thought. And Marty is dumb as a bag of rocks. (laughs) I'm about to roll so many fucking dice. Oh, God. I'm about to roll so many fucking dice. 42 damage. 
And it's 42 force damage, not piercing, because it is, it's magical force because of the planar warrior thing. You take out your crossbow. A number of your spells go over the mind flare and yourself. You aim carefully after Marty gives you this determined nod, and Marty takes out his hand crossbow, and both of you fire. Both hitting the mind flare right in the back. It screams out in this echo, and Marty just holds his head for a moment. And like shakes his head, and he looks at you like, damn, that was loud. It turns to the Elithid's turn. So you hear in your mind, What are you? Wait, inevitable. We've broken none of your laws, servant of Mechanus. Be gone. So you see he shoots out this blast. And nothing happens. You're just standing there. And you hear this thud and this choking for a second. And you look over. You see that blood is coming out of Marty's eyes, mouth, nose, and ears. He's laying on the ground convulsing. He's not dead, but not much else is like is going to be done and it could just kill him. This elithid is starting to float towards you, its blackish blood spilling onto the floor. Cursed you inevitable. You're ruining everything. And it goes to you. Marty, my friend. I run towards the elithid and cast silence. Hmm. To stop him from casting spells. Interesting. Um, this is my new level two spell that I chose to take. I took it because I was thinking I would like cast silence and then shoot a crossbow. But through my database searches, I know elithids mostly fight by using spell casting. What you see happen is a little like n- like a little nub pops up from my shoulder, a little <laughs> cylinder. Like all the sounds, if they were visible as waves within a 20 foot radius just gets sucked into this nub like a black hole so that any sound that's created in this area just gets pulled into my thing my nub (laughs) (laughs) so you see this creature looks enraged it's saying things and nothing's happening and it's getting more frustrated and let's see and I run up to him, uh, like, directly. Like, we're five foot from each other, so that if he tries to escape me, I will attack. So he just, he goes, and you see his tentacles start to harden, almost. You see there's a couple more tentacles than what you know Mind Flare to have. And he starts just wailing them at you. Uh, what's your AC? 14. So this mind flare, enraged that it can't hear anything, its tentacles solidify, and they almost grow a little bit and just start whipping and wailing at you. Pieces of you go flying off in every direction. Your body wasn't built for this kind of abuse. You're meant to be fighting other kind of creatures with just weapons, not this strange psionic abilities. You take 50 points of damage as this mind flare is just ripping at you. He criticaled on one of his hits. Which is why. Yeah, I also uh, forgot to do my assassinate thing for my rogue on my initial attack. I mean, I, I didn't want to bring it up because whatever. But on a successful surprise attack, it, it's an automatic critical hit on, on successful surprise attacks. Damn it, Dave, you would have killed him. <laughs> <laughs> we have all this story going now. So after he hits me and seeing how I might be a little overwhelmed, I disengage with my cunning action. And I disengage in the direction of his sphere, and I go to smash it. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I pick it up, and I just run at the wall with it to, like, break it against the wall. Roll me a strength save. Or, I guess, a strength check. Critical. Shit. <laughs> All right. So you pick up this sphere... And you see it reach out towards you. When it went to swing at you when you were leaving, your reflex just heightened to such a degree that you were able to predict where it was coming at you. 
and you dodge these things, grabbing the spear, running with it. You smash it into the wall, and shards go everywhere, and this blast erupts. You go sailing backwards, and you land right back where Marty was. And you see the Elithid slam into the wall, its head just crushed against the side, this blackish blood spraying everywhere as its body just limply collapses. And Marty looks over at you, and you look over at Marty. And Marty just gives you a thumbs up, and looks over to the Elithid and flips at the finger before slipping away, and then your vision slowly turns to static. So you find yourself regaining consciousness once more, and uh, you're in Mechanus. This same construction room that you've been in before many modron are around you see they're bringing new pieces putting them onto you uh, a new magical sword is being equipped into a sheath and put onto your side and this time they're bolting on what looks to be stronger armor onto you so your armor will be plus one of right. whatever it is you choose to wear and you hear uh, through one of the modron coming up to you T-I-4-2-5 What happened back there? Initializing. Analyzing. It appears that I was able to learn a lot more information about Borodon. He is a part of a group called Death Shift. He has three companions. A Kalsar, a Tiefling Paladin, a MZ, a Githyanki Ranger, and a Rani who is a half-elf bard. Interesting. This information will prove useful. To repay that in that information, I teamed up with a man named Marty. Marty is from Sanctuary. He requested some assistance from me in, to help for what he's helped me with. So, it's like I had a, a friendship. Friends. Yes. So I helped Marty, and we found an illithid lair. Illithid have infiltrated Sanctuary. I destroyed some sort of sphere that they were using. We will process this information, TI-425. What do you mean by friendship? Loyalty. Kindness. Helpful. There are people of Faerun that seem to help me whenever I am there which makes me want to help them. Friends, they say. TI-425, this is not in your programming to have friends. Why do you pursue such goals? I do not know. Would you like to be reinitialized? No, because it helps. It helps on my missions. We will be erasing this friendship. One moment, please. And you feel them start to go in, but... You also notice your permissions haven't changed since you last updated them. I guess let's do a uh, like a stealth check, but in a in a computer sense, like I'm just hiding the permissions. Okay. Like fighting against it, I guess you could say, but not really fighting, but hiding against it as they try to infiltrate my databases. Sure. Uh, go ahead and roll it. It's a 20, 12 plus 8. So they are scanning through, and you see they just run a query, and they just leave it, thinking, this is what it's going to do, it'll be fine. And you see the tables that it's going and affecting, but you've managed to back up your data into a separate area so that it won't be permanently deleted. 
and you see the different things it's affecting, and also retrieving and updating other tables with this information that you know, specifically to your mission. You've now located the area where they are storing the information from your previous revisions. I don't attempt yet, but okay, I know where it is. He's now aware. Yeah. All right, TI-425, you have been cleaned. You are ready. Your newly constructed armor should prove to be more efficient. Good luck on your next mission, TI-425. Mechanist will prevail. Mechanist will prevail. Mechanist will prevail. Mechanist will prevail.